you could have uh, just this wide variety of people that are listening to this sermon. So you might ask yourself, well, like, how are we supposed to do this then? Because I got to preach from my tradition. Um, and that is absolutely correct. Um, so regardless of the tradition that you're coming from, there are going to be some key things that are important that they're going to look at. And if you want a, uh, if you want kind of a good cheat sheet of the things that they're going to look at, there is an app that you can download, uh, from the, um, uh, from Apple, from the Apple store, or I, I believe it's on Android. I'm an Apple guy, so I, I, I don't know. It is called on target coaching. Okay. And it looks, I don't know if this is going to work like something like this. Okay. Um, this was developed by Tradoc, uh, through the army specifically for, uh, evaluating chaplains preaching. So the idea is that a senior chaplain can take this app and go into a sermon that is being preached by one of their uh, battalion chaplains, and they can sit and they can review it, right? And so there's, there's four points that they're looking at for on here, and I'll, I'll tell you what they are because it's probably hard to see. It's point, purpose, delivery, and presence, right? And those are four points that they're looking for. So if you click on point, um, what it'll ask you is central idea, concise, repeated, memorable. So those are the things that they're looking for. Is there a central idea? So, um, you know, there's different schools of thought with preaching, uh, but what has become more prominent these days is that there should be some one central idea that everything links back to that is repeated multiple times because we, we don't have that ability to retain, you know, 10 points of a sermon. You know, what's that central idea? Was it concise, right? Is it, you know, um, did they repeat it and was it memorable? And so they can go through and they can check off and did they meet these things, right? Next, you go over to purpose, okay? Was it relevant? Was it applicable? Was it clear, contextual? You look at delivery. Was there eye contact, gestures, movement, tone, volume, speed, pauses, uh, and presence? Was it uh, sincerity, empathy, conviction, posture, enthusiasm? Uh, and connection. So what I would recommend that you do is you download this app, right? And kind of look through it. And as you're practicing your sermons, uh, as you're developing your sermons, once you go through and see, am I hitting these things? Okay. Do I have a clear purpose? Is it repeatable? Is this memorable? Uh, do I need to adjust so that this is um, something that, that is going to stick with people? All right, so um, get that app. It's going to be really helpful for you. If you've got a chance to preach on a regular basis, maybe what you can do is uh, give this app to somebody, maybe your elders, your deacons, whatever your kind of leadership is, maybe that senior pastor, and say, here, do this for me, right? Sit and, and, and click this and give me feedback. There's opportunities for them to write down. Um, and I, I think this will actually print out a, uh, a review for you. But this is how the army has developed uh, a way to encourage um, encourage preachers to do better and to get better. All right, so let's talk about the actual sermon itself. Um, again, people are coming from these different backgrounds um, as they're listening, but they're going to be listening for some key things. Uh, you know, everybody that is uh, on this chat is um, seminary trained, right? Um, you, some of you are at the beginning of the seminary, some of you guys are at the end, some of you completed, uh, but everybody is seminary trained in some way. Um, I have seen preachers and I've seen it in the army, um, where people are just reading a commentary. They, they're, they're, that's really all they're doing is they're reading a com and you have to, you have to wonder like, why are you doing it that way? Why are you using these types of words. Now, I'm, I'm not one that thinks that we need to dumb down everything for, uh, for our congregations. Hopefully, we want our congregations to be learning and growing. Um, but sometimes, um, we have to ask ourselves, well, why did I use that word? Why did I use the $10 word instead of the $2 word? Um, and sometimes that's because I want people to think I'm smart. Um, I want to impress people with my knowledge, right? 
So uh, like everything that we do in the army in general, uh, we need to come at this with kind of a, it's a two-sided coin. It's confidence and humility. We absolutely have to have both in everything that we do in the army. Uh, and especially when we come to preaching, confidence is balanced by humility. Confidence taken too far is arrogance. Humility taken too far is weakness. And we can't really afford to have either of those. We have to have, uh, we have to have them in, in balance. So that, that was a really good point. Okay, any, anybody else? What are their thoughts on what is preaching? Can I make another point? I'm sorry. Sure, sure. No, go ahead. Uh, um, another point is, is if we do use the big words, well, then we use the definition of those words so people can understand what they mean. And I didn't tell my background. My background is non-denominational Christian. Okay, great. Thank you. Yes, and if you're going to use if you're going to use a big word, you absolutely have to explain what it is. Um, there, you know, even in the army chaplaincy, uh, you you go to chapels. There are retirees who go to the chapel. Um, who I mean, they retired sometimes 30, 40 years ago, but they go to the chapel because that's the only church they've ever known. And so you have uh, pretty significant um, retiree populations in, in in a lot of the chapels. So sometimes you get that 80 year old, uh, that 80 year old saint who has been um, following Christ just for, you know, decades, you know, for 50, 60 years of faithfulness. Um, they don't know what transubstantiation is, right? And they, and they really don't need to know. Uh, and if we spend a lot of time explaining that to them, it, we're going to lose them, you know? Um, all right. Um, a couple of things that, that are, are really important with this. Everybody has different views on, on preaching. Again, some see it as a um, exhortation. Some see it as teaching. Some see it as a means of grace. Um, the, the common things that are going to um, that are, that are going to be looked for here are uh, how you handle the word. Right. So now, again, as I said, you're going to have this panel and they could all be from different denominational backgrounds. Now, let's say you're talking about uh, a passage in scripture and you have a different theological approach than they have on it. That's okay because they understand that you're preaching from your theological perspective. So, but there's a difference in uh, how we handle that text um, that, that can, be, can be very important. All right, so let me give you a couple examples of this. So uh, let's say you're going to give a sermon on um, the life of Daniel, right? And you're particularly, we're going to talk about Daniel and the lion's den. Now, some people will take Daniel and the lion's den as um, the, the, the main theme or important piece here is dare to be a Daniel. Daniel had uh, uh, all of these pressures on uh, on him and he he stood up and he dared to be you know you need to dare to be a Daniel um, that's 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 an interpretation that's a, that's a theological interpretation that can come from your background now some of us may agree with that some of us may not others may take Daniel in the lion's den as an example of uh, God's sustaining grace that God uh, that, that Daniel is not the hero of this story, that God is the hero of this story. That's a theological interpretation, and that's, that's acceptable. Um, you know, uh, and depending on your background, you may be kind of lean towards one or the other one of them. So either take that you take on that is going to be acceptable when they're evaluating your sermon. Now, what is not acceptable is when you, if you get up and you say, um, Nebuchadnezzar threw when uh, when Daniel was a young man. Nebuchadnezzar threw him into the lion's den. Okay, who can tell me what the problem is with that? Besides our guy that teaches seminary is with the PhD. Anybody other than Bill? Tell me what the problem is with what I just said. When Daniel was a young man, Nebuchadnezzar threw him into the lion's den. Pretty sure that Nebuchadnezzar wasn't the one that threw him into the lion's den. There you go. That's right. I mean, and chances, that's, and that's chances are. That's pretty, pretty dangerous if you're going to change the storyline and the characters of the story. Yep. So, also, Nebuch uh, Daniel was most likely not a young man at this point. He was most likely an older man at this point. 
Um, these are the type of things that you have to watch for because what happens is when you say something like that, uh, and it may be a slip. So you could say something like that unintentionally. Uh, hopefully you won't because you've spent the time in the word and you've, you, you've poured over it and you've made sure that you've got these details right. But some people will hear that and immediately shut off. And they're like, okay, this, I, this person, I, I can't trust what this person says, right? Um, so that's one of those things that, um, that people will sometimes pick up on um, and that we have to be kind of careful about. So when you're preparing these sermons, uh, I, I think Mindy said it said really well here, you have to know the passage backwards and forwards, and you have to make sure that you're saying only saying what is actually in the passage, right? Theological interpretation is good. Make sure that you have a theological interpretation that is in line with your beliefs and the beliefs of your church, but make sure also that you're being very careful with the facts, 